The word of the week is anthernosis and how it'll kill your crop. Let's go. If you have anthernosis, just write everything off as a loss. Even though these did a little bit better, you can see that they just never fully established. So these ended up being way more susceptible to the disease. 80 to 100% crop loss. So you just kind of move on with your life. We'll just try to protect our bell peppers even here. Here's one with uh, poblano. If you like the content, you know, give me a like, a subscribe, comment down below. I'll reply to any uh, questions that you have. Share and follow. Blue Lab Tools, not sponsored, just the tools. Uh, I got asked a question by another uh, farmer. They were like, why do you have these expensive tools? And I said, well, they don't break. And I've been doing this for like a little over two years now. It's been exactly two years, I think, since we put our first crop on the ground. So I don't have a lot of knowledge in that, but I do know that buying quality tools prevents uh, future losses. And I couldn't do a lot of the farming I do without these tools. Again, you're gonna see the good and the bad on this channel. I don't wanna hide any of it. I just wanna show you what the reality of farming is. And this is any business. This is actually good business uh, knowledge because it doesn't matter what business you do, there's always gonna be losses. There's gonna be bad days and good days. You know, if I share a lot of that knowledge with you guys, I did my part. Because I touched jalapenos, I made sure to spray uh, my hands really good. So this is uh, one month or 30 days after uh, transplant with uh, the Reichwan, uh peppers. You can see that we actually have a little bit of mite right there. See, I'm already calling it out as I see it. So we have a little bit of mite infestation starting there. You can see how it has the curled leaves, the browning at the top. We also have flowering sort of beginning. I think we're still in a late vegetative. You can see our progress from uh, one week uh, to the next. So it took about a week to get this all with two strands of blue wire. So now we're just doing our checks in between. You're starting to see the normal uh, V pattern start to come in. So that's where we're gonna start following it up. And then every part where it splits will be a pepper. So right in there, pepper. Now we're not gonna mess with that. As long as there's enough nutrition, your pepper plant can have a lot. I see another part over there, which is mite. So we're gonna have to treat for mite. Mite normally comes in from heat. If it's too hot, this could be physerium or too much watering when it gets like that. So that's one of its big issues. These are all the checks you have to do on a weekly basis, by a weekly basis to kind of see what is happening in your field. And because I've been doing this for two years now, I can kind of point out really quick what's going on with other people will kind of guess. I'm also looking for nutrient levels. Um, this is probably a nutrient versus mite. See how the you have the different, I think like chlorophyll in between. That's most likely a nutrient level. So this side, when I looked at the pictures, I got pictures of these before I came up, I can see that this side was a little bit stunted. So we're gonna have to treat for that. Your pepper crop is very susceptible to any types of environmental changes or anything else like that. So we have a, we have a good start here, but I can see that we're gonna need to boost nutrition as well as we're gonna have to treat for mite. And that's just what's gonna happen when you have uh, a crop inside a greenhouse. We can't control uh, how our greenhouse will work in terms of heat and humidity. Uh, vegetative stage, you really want a lot of humidity and heat to promote that vegetative growth. But when you want to go into actual generative state where you want to produce the fruit that you're actually going to sell, then you need to make sure that you reduce the humidity, reduce the heat. It's just going to provide a little bit better because sometimes they can get really long like this one. This is about a foot tall before it finally wide you normally want it a little bit lower. So that, that's one of the big things. The leaves are really big, which is good. See a little bit of caterpillar uh, damage on that one. I'm not seeing as much mite. I am seeing a little bit of nutrient. And one thing that, that I really push is uh, you can do a triple 19 spray when you start want to balance out your crop. You just don't know what type of nutrient it actually needs unless you do tissue testing and you can tell kind of based on what you gave it, but you never know what it's gonna be. So just a triple 19, triple 20 will work. You can even do a little bit less if you're doing more uh, field-based. Uh, you can see that it'll bounce back and then you spray that one week and then look at it and then see if it, it bounced out. So here we got a little bit of mite in here, in here, so we're gonna definitely treat. We still have our old caterpillar damage. We had our army worm come in so the leaves didn't worry about the plant didn't care too much i am seeing a really good thickening of our uh, branches that's normally through to the potassium and phosphate so you can see that it's really making really nice uh, at least the size of a number two pencil or bigger 
branches, that's gonna provide a lot of powerhouse. So that means that these guys have a good root system. And that's kind of one of the big uh, things you wanna do. This is probably nutrient as well. So we're gonna provide a balanced uh, nutrient solution this week. And I think that's kind of one of the big ones. You can see a little bit slow here, right? These ones are a little behind. They're probably our transplants that were left over. So that's just what happens. That's why you can't um, change it because your crop's already getting big and in, into that next stage. So you have to kind of watch it as it grows. So if it does take off, it's already done. It's too late. That's why you have to make sure you do everything right. We have a little bit of bug problem this week. That'll be easy to nuke. And then we have a little bit of nutrition that I'll already be checking anyway. Looks like we still have some stuff feeding on that or just stuff maybe just got twisted off when we were applying that. Again, sometimes you have mechanical damage just by applying that. But otherwise, this crop looks really good. I'm not seeing anything else. I'm seeing really big leaves. I'll show you the size of some of these leaves. So this is one of our leaves. This is the size of my hand. So it's already getting really big. I want them bigger. So I'm gonna probably feed a little bit uh, more nitrogen this week, but we're just at the flower set you don't want to feed too much because you're starting to set flower and if there's enough reason anytime that you apply more nitrogen then you're gonna have less flower set so if i mess with this i want to see how it actually releases in there there so it's the pollen that i'm looking for so i want to see how powdery it is so that one feels nice so i think these are pretty good i can also look at the plant and i can see how green it is in between i can see the size so I'm, I'm willing to let this go a lot of people will pick their flowers i can feed it more i can do more things to actually get it to grow and your pepper plant it's just going to abort your flower anyway it's going to abort the fluid if it can't support life it's just going to kill it anyway it already knows what to do you don't have to help it anymore you do need to prune it if you want to make sure that it focuses on growing the big fruit right you want a 250 gram pepper not 150 or 100 those are like reject level right so you want to make sure that will help so that's more later on is that you want it to focus on that one that has set but you don't ever want to mess with your flowers until they've actually set and fruited so that's one good thing now you can see right here 50 cell versus the 128 cell um, again here's another wilty one that could be bacterial or it could be too much watering so we'll probably tone down the watering but you can see that they really do catch up into that and you can see our wall. Yeah, I already pointed that out. Trees pointing out to the one over there. And this is the part of the losses. This is why you have to plant. If you plant 1600 plants, expect 20% to die. There's nothing you can do about that. You just have to expect that that's what's gonna happen. So all these guys are pretty good. We got our nice blue curtain up. And we have a little bit of mite problem that we're gonna take up. Nothing that's uh, gonna require overkill this week. I got an easy spray. For that, it's gonna be uh, vegetable oil. I'm just gonna worry about too much of this. If it bounces back later, then most likely it's not a bacterial wilt or a physarium wilt, but if it doesn't bounce back by the time I come check it again, we're gonna kill it and rip it out because the chances of it infecting the rest of the crop is too big. We'll move on with that. Weekly pepper update. If you, uh, you like the content, you know, give me a like, a subscribe, comment down below, ask me any questions, share, and then we'll see you next week.